Welcome, Alec. Thank you for coming all this way to share your story with uh, everyone here. Uh, you are a mechanical engineer at Joby Aviation, uh, and as we saw in the video, they're going to be doing some amazing disruptions to personal transportation. I'm looking forward to getting an hour a day back myself in my commute. Uh, and our focus for this session is about manufacturing is creative. And that's a very interesting pairing of two words that don't normally go together. And we really are talking about manufacturing as a as a, a way to bring a, the idea of mass customization, but at the cost of mass production, but also using tremendous innovation to create new, uh, new business models and, and, and obviously some new opportunities you're doing. So I believe at Joby, you guys are doing a bit of both. Can you explain a little bit about that? Absolutely. Uh, so at Joby Aviation, uh, you know, our DNA is built upon electric vertical and takeoff um, aircraft. And what we believe that can do for us is, or for you, is bring people from A to B um, to their destination faster in a more direct and environmentally friendly way. Uh, we see ourselves, rather than as an aviation company, more of a mobility company, uh, enabling you, freeing you from what we have currently, or just giving you another option. Um, so when we set out to design these, you know, design this market and push it forward, we knew that we had to create a new vehicle. In order to do that, we wanted to really look ahead into how we create this, you know, how do we develop this concept. And we knew that as we're making aircraft, it's a very multidisciplinary problem. You need to bring together many different technologies uh, in a succinct manner, and we want to do it really quickly. So we thought that the, a good way to do that was to jump into the 3D experience. We saw that at that time it had the proper design tools that we needed, but also had the downstream solutions we wanted. Um, you know, some of the technologies we've been looking at recently have been uh, additive manufacturing, for instance, and seeing how 3D printing will, you know, does that work on the aircraft? Right now, it's still in the play stages. We're still trying out that technology, um, trying to see if it, if it works for us. Um, one of the, uh, you know, major pieces with it is it's not a typical aerospace process. So we know there's obstacles there. And just as that's not a typical process, Joby Aviation is not your typical aerospace company. We know that we really have to uh, overcome some obstacles into uh, today's regulations. There's a lot there that we need to challenge. In order to do that, we really value iteration and simulation. Uh, you know, being near Silicon Valley, we kind of see that as like a software iteration where you go through, you change a couple things, um, you see what that looks like in real life, take a step back and say, hey, do you know, did that work? Did that work for us? Uh, what do we do? What do we do? What can we do better? So it's interesting. You're taking this software DevOps approach to iterate rapidly because you are innovating and creating something brand new. Uh, I want to go in a little more depth on what you said about additive manufacturing and 3D printing, which is something sort of new in the aerospace industry. So can you let us know what, what are you really doing with that? What type of parts are you creating with 3D printing? So one of the most obvious ones or parts to make is prototyping. Um, you know, it's these ones and twos, something you're not really sure about in the design yet. You really want to understand it more. You want to get something back in house as quickly as possible. Um, one of the things that I really like about 3D printing is it gives the designer a whole lot of freedom. Uh, it has a wholly different set of constraints than uh, you know most other manufacturing processes have, which are all great processes. We're just trying to figure out how does this work differently. Um, and when you wrap that together with simulation at a really early stage, you can have this closed loop. And like I said, you can just iterate and see how we can really get weight out of this component, as that's very important to us. Um, so. With that in mind, uh, we really want to see that technology further develop. Now, with the 3D printing, is that something that you're doing in-house, or are you leveraging some suppliers for that? So, you know, right now, Joby Aviation really sees itself as a vertically integrated company. We want to bring as much in-house as possible. 3D printing is one of the things that we don't currently do in-house at scale. Um, right now, we see that it's faster and cheaper to have someone else run it for us. Um, right now, another, another piece of where we use this technology is for components that they come back cheaper and faster with good enough quality for our prototypes. We'll see how that scales for downstream manufacturing. 
One of the keys you touched on earlier today actually was the uh, 3D experience marketplace. And you, know, you had suppliers for parts and components that we could get. Uh, one of the tools that we've been using as well has been the marketplace for 3D printing, where we can take the part right out of the CAD system, drag and drop it into uh, the solution on cloud, and see what other suppliers are out there that are part of the network that can uh, you know, supply us those components in acceptable lead times and cost. Excellent. So what is the production quantities that you're doing right now? Currently, we're still in the prototype phases, so we're making ones and twos of things, um, and we really hope to see that scale up over the years. OK, so then for you, 3D printing is a way to keep the costs down. So instead of spending money on tooling or expensive things to create complex parts, using 3D printing to get those things rapidly and s save all that money so you can continue to iterate and, and grow. So as you begin to move into a larger production or get out of prototyping into production, um, that's obviously going to need some processes. In fact, you're inventing some new processes and working with the FAA and, and uh, trying to figure those things out. But with respect to, to what you need to do internally to manage these types of things, what are you expecting to do with the 3D Experience platform to help you prepare? We really see that growing for us is going to be a, uh, a matter of scaling the components that are available to us on cloud currently. You know, we started with designing in Katia, um, and we've grown into managing other products and document control with Anovia. Um, for the last couple of years, we've been using Delmia to do our machining. And we really want to leverage these same technologies and continue to grow these, uh, our understanding of the capabilities and grow our company alongside with it. Um, so uh, what else are you trying to explore with some of the other technologies uh, with Delmia and Anovia? Yeah, so up next, we, uh, we've just started playing with configured bills of materials. We're taking things from a very prototype way of an engineered bill of materials. And we want to reconfigure that into how the product will look downstream. Uh, that in conjunction with other tools like work instructions um, and managing that. I mean, it's great when you can put all this data into a single place. Uh, you know, as we've seen already today, what you can do by having that design coupled together with the manufacturing information um, and how those layers really feed back. Uh, other pieces that we're playing with are some of the factory uh, layout planning tools that we've seen today as well. Again, we're a small company growing, so it's great to see these technologies progressing. And I think I heard you say this, but I want to make sure everybody heard you. You're doing all this on a cloud? That's correct. We're doing all this on the cloud. Uh, originally, we started looking at uh, on-premise and seeing if that was a solution for us. Um, but at that time, I was looking to get only two people, myself and another engineer, onto the system. And we saw that we didn't need a bunch of customization. We just need you know, some of the, the basic tools for, uh, for design. Um, that in conjunction with, we quickly found out uh, the amount of IT we would need to set up an on-premise solution. So at the time, we decided to go for cloud. And that was back in 2014, and we're still on it. It's been great. Uh, I mean, we've been putting people, you know, when I onboard somebody, it's a matter of just getting another license and tagging it right to them. Excellent. So in the next six months, with all of this amazing you know, engineering innovation that you're doing, uh, how are you starting to cross that and tie that into manufacturing innovation? With the uh, different innovations that are coming through, we're uh, really hoping to tie this together with a, uh, an MRP system or an ERP system down the line. We see that as the next growth over the next six months. Um, it's very important for us, and that's not so much a platform thing, but we do see it as such, and we have to get our engineers and get our data uh, standardized for that output to then tie it into an MRP and ERP system for the rest of the company to run on. Um, it's really these back-end pieces that we've known are there the entire time, and we've used a little bit, but as a small company, it's a lot easier to go without that. We're now at a point where in order to follow regulations and to uh, you know, make a, a safe and reliable product, we really need to exercise these back-end pieces. And so that's where the maturity comes in um, of different life cycle pieces of release data, freezing it, working for approvals. And that's really going to add a whole new layer um, of credibility to what we're doing so that when it comes time to meet regulations, we have a very consistent way to show that continuity of data through design, through manufacture, and on. So then as, as you're ramping into these production processes and regulatory approvals and things like that, 
know, that's, that's really where you're starting to add on some of those pieces that you need, right? Exactly. And that's something that you're getting value because you are on the cloud and it's fairly easy to add these things. Can you explain a little bit about that? Right, so as we've been growing, we can uh, really call up our, our reseller and say, hey, we want to grow a little bit in this direction. We need a little more specialty and simulation. How, what apps can we get? Or I have a new hire and we're doing the same kind of thing in simulation. Or you know, six months later, we're pushing more manufacturing. We want to start using these tools to simulate how much square footage do we need for building the airplane we want to build? And we've started playing around with those tools as well. So it's really scalable in the direction that we want and when we want it. And it's great relying on um, Dasso Systems to bring out the, the solutions that we need when we need them. So you're taking this grow-as-you-go type of approach where you started simply, as you said, doing some design, you start doing some tooling with Delmia, and you start adding in some more Anovia for control of documents, getting into build of material management, getting into some more process control, uh, doing some more Delmia for, for factory layout and process planning. So it's pretty interesting that you're able to leverage our cloud solution, not worry about IT integrations and all these things, and, and really keep yourself nimble and, and quick. So Final advice that you'd like to give to everyone here in Shanghai in terms of your, your journey in leveraging all this capability. Yeah, I think one of the biggest things that we've, we've learned and we've developed internally is this iterative cycle. Um, always going through, looking for what else can we do better, and not being afraid to challenge what the normal is. You know, look at out of manufacturing. Look at our entire concept. That is not a previous thing that has been well marketed. Uh, and so we really think that in order to make that happen, you need to have this continuous flow of data. Make sure that all of your engineers are working on the same thing and that this whole collaborative um, and teamwork atmosphere is really supported by a system like this. You know, I really want to see our, our solution come to everyone here in this room, and I think that that is the way to do it. Um, I really see it that in order to bring these experiences uh, to market, innovators have to start using tools like this now. Excellent. Well, thank you, Alex. On behalf of Dassault Systems and everyone here in Shanghai, thank you for sharing your story with us. Thank you.